this is what you do, man. You're you and then put it in writing with them as soon as possible. I have been hired as the general contractor to perform all the repairs that are prescribed by this claim. And here's the thing, you never want to talk to them about policy and coverage. You never want to talk to the, you know, to the insurance company about, about that stuff. You never want to say, hey, the policy says that you have to pay this or this and that. Or you, you know, you can say that they did not pay enough money. You can say that they've underpaid. You can say that they haven't paid for enough items. You can say a lot of different things. You can say this is, you know, you haven't identified this damage and I have identified the damage. You could say a lot of things. See, in my mind, when you are the general contractor, you have more power than anybody. And see, people don't understand that. I think a lot of people think, oh no, the public, and I hear people say this a lot, a public adjuster has a lot more power because they can hold them to, the, to account on policy issues. Yes, yes sure they can, but the, why does a public adjuster keep calling me then to get the documentation for them. You see what I mean? To go out and do the inspection and get the estimate written correctly. Because all of that stuff, like you can't hold them to account on the policy without relying on solid documentation, evidence, the case, a solid case, right? And so like public adjusters love me after I've already done all that stuff for them because I hand them and make their job a lot easier. But without all of those other things, they can't do it. And they have to rely on what the contractor says, the public adjuster does. They can't say, hey, I'm the contractor and I'm telling you I can't do this job the way you're, you're saying. They have to rely on uh, what other contractor. Oh, I talked to this many, talked to three different con. So when you're the contractor, you've been hired. If you have been hired and there's a contract, they can't go get opinions of everybody. They can if they want, but it doesn't matter. There's nobody else that's going to get the job, only you. So it only matters whether or not you can perform the repairs for the for the amount and doing it the way that they say. It doesn't matter what everybody else thinks about how the, rep the repairs can be performed. So if I'm the contractor, I just simply say, okay, I see that your, your prescription is X. I'm gonna go attempt to do your prescription. But if I can't, I'm gonna show you how I can't with documentation and give you a price for what it's gonna take to do it right. You see, and there's nothing that they could do to get out of that. I'm gonna send you over as a couple of works. And that's that's what I was gonna. Invitation. That's what I was gonna ask you for, man. Then we can we can craft something together, and I can send you a proposal. We can lock it down. The only other caveat I have for you, brother, would you mind at all terribly if you saw this entire conversation pop up on a YouTube video? Hello, this is Chad. Hey, what's up, Chad? Hey, how you doing, man? All right, dude. Uh, yeah, I'm watching all your videos, man. Oh, is that right? For the next yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. man. Yeah, um, we were we're operating off of we're just dude. Like, I mean, I, I even watched your your video where you uh, where you came from, your background, and everything, and very similar to mine, you know what I mean? But, uh, I was, uh, yeah, I was just with that poverty mindset, man, just taking that first, first check and just settling for that. But anyway, um, yes, sir. And I was just leaving, leaving all that cash on, on, on the table, you know? And then after watching your video, you know, I, I stopped and I knew about this exactly. I mean, I worked for a big group of companies, got the spot and started home. But anyway, uh, man, I got into, uh, activate but then I never really started to stretch my legs to until I started watching your videos man it took off from there and I mean it's I'll tell you this it's it's, it's a longer process. You know what I mean? Uh, it gets drug out but I mean uh, I'm getting paid. Like right now I just I recovered seventeen thousand dollars. Nice on one little Yeah, on one little claim that it well, I got this one lady that that's got mold coverage and I mean, they're they improve they improve the interior. I gotta get I gotta get in the interior. I don't know if I should do an air quality test or what. Uh, what do you think on that? That uh, she has she has damage on that. But really, I want to invest in your program. You got her urge that people. I want to. You got a program, and I got uh, I got a couple snow reps that I like to bring with me. And uh, where, where's your next? What's your next move? Where are you going? 
Yeah, no, that's great. Um, have you checked out my training course, the uh, IESCertified.com? Right, right. I want to do that. I want to do that. Yeah, that, I mean that. I would put them through there. Honestly, I mean that. The IES stands for Inspections, Estimates, and Supplements, and it it really breaks it down for anyone. I mean, it's it's really good, I believe for someone whether you have been around for 20 years in the industry and you've been doing it forever um, but also for the person that's brand new entry level doesn't know what a right. supplement even is right and the yeah, reason right. why is because some of the stuff I, I start from a, a, a pretty basic level so that people can get an understanding for the industry as a whole and where the different parts go into it right so that if someone brand new comes into it they want to understand kind of what an adjuster does right like what 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 the process looks like the agent the the public adjuster the legal stuff you know so, so that they can kind of see a broader view of the industry as a whole um now some of that stuff might be considered basic for someone that has been around for 20 years, but I think it helps that person for a way to be able to explain these things in a very simple form to like a client. Because a client, you know, if you've been around for 20 years and you you come across a property owner, you may have done, you know, many of these jobs and you've dealt with many adjusters, but the, the property owner, this may be and probably is their very first time, you know, going through a process like this. So I think sometimes we have to step out of our know-it-all shoes and look at it from the point of view of the client, of the property owner, right? And try to understand it and see it the way that they're seeing it. So I think it's helpful for anyone really, but the course is, you know, it, it's probably um, 40 hours plus of video and audio so like a lot of the segments you don't really need to watch there's nothing visual other than looking at me teaching right um so some of those courses might be better for someone that's on the road all day you know like they can listen to it in the audio form but there's actual tests you know at the end of each segment so you know you get to see you know there's an actual graduation process a certification process at the very end so for the new reps, I think it's ideal, and it's also something that they can add to their the resume. You know what? I'm kind of I'm kind of advanced, you know, to where to where I mean, dude, I've watched all your videos. <laughs> I'm talking about all your videos. So I mean, so nice. you kind of prep me, you give me enough of information. Like I want to take a course, especially for my for my uh, for my Delta, but you know where I'm at, so they can get a better understanding because they're not going to sit there. Uh, they're not hungry like me. You know, I mean. I came from, from nothing and I'm making something and it's just like, I mean, it's amazing what you can do with this insurance company and how, how they get over all these people, you know, and it's just like, it's like, well, I'm, I'm a superhero here in Marlin, Texas, a little small town, and there is there's a there's underpaid, there's a nice clients and I'm taking them, and, you know, and it, there's other roofing companies that aren't doing what we're doing, you know, sure. it's like, we're, we're representing homeowners and on, on, on their behalf, you know, and I'm on their behalf. For the insurance company and and, uh, and taking these plans and getting them paid out right for reasonable cost, you know, or and, and all that, but that way they can afford the general contract. You know? Sure. And what, what part yeah, of the what, uh, what part of the course too might be, you know, for the reps especially, is all of the stuff on the inspections. I mean. You know, if you've if you've been watching a bunch of my videos, you already know how I think as far as you know the the real um, success comes from the details, right? So, like, I'm not going to go out on a roofing job and take five pictures. I'm not going to go out on any job and take five pictures. I'm going to take you know hundreds of pictures, probably a minimum of 300 pictures on any job, right? It's the the, sure. uh -huh. the documentation, right? The proof. And so like, if I was a brand new sales rep and somebody told me, okay, you gotta take 300 pictures, well, what should I be taking pictures of? Like, what should I be looking for? 
Um, you know, I, I look at every job site like it's a crime scene that has to be investigated, right? Like it has to be, every inch of it has to be covered. So I think anybody, um, but really honestly, for if, if it's someone for, you know, like yourself, the here's a huge value in the course. And right now it's $4.99, you know, it's normally $9.99, but it's four and there's a monthly subscription price because I updated, but the, $4.99, if you think about this right here, one part of the, the course is all documents and forms. And so yeah, that's you, cool. That, that's what I need. Because yeah. what I'm getting stuck at, what I'm getting stuck at, what, what I'm stumping out at is when the engineer comes to the market club. Sure. You know, and all he does is try to take the building apart and try to deny the engineer death. You know, that, that's all they do. They get there, you know, they'll start picking the building apart and say, okay, this and that. And there's really nothing wrong with the building. I mean, it's a kit, you know what I mean? They put the building together. Uh, they start picking up the carpet walls, all that stuff. You know, I mean, in order to tie the interior when they have mold coverage, they got this kind of coverage. And there's a whole bunch of stuff we could be doing for the property owner. But then they'll pick it apart, battling with these, these engines, these engineers, kind of, kind of tough one to meet. Like the the home adjuster, he's, he's simple, you know, like you say, it's on, you know, I work right through him. But at the desk adjuster, you have to finish your estimate, you know, and then uh, from there, you know, get your something approved. But when they send out an engineer, you know, that, that's, that's, a, that's a little different for me, you know. Right? How many of, I, how, I got, let me ask you this, man. How many of those are you I dealing three, with? I have three commercial. I have three commercial properties right now that, that I can't, that they only pay $15,000 out for a pressure washer and the perimeter, the perimeter for the uh, the cap. You know, it's a metal roof, but you know the walls, they have to have that um, metal flashing cap. So that right there got dinged up by hell. Two inch hell, it's arm panel on top, and they got about 22 packages on top, like 10 foot, like huge, you know? Yeah. So, okay, well, so you deal with these quite a bit then, am I, I'm assuming, right? Well, I mean, I mean, I'm even to the point to where I'm stumped out. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll get, give it to you and, and see if you can work something up. I don't, I don't care. There's, these, there's a good sort of contract. Sure. Well, there's a lot of different things, right? Like, sometimes they're... One, okay, let me just give you a couple, you know, some, some advice while we're on the phone, right? Like you have, a lot of times they're looking for, they use the engineers for a number of different purposes, right? And I think one of the, uh, one of the reasons why they do this, if you, you gotta break this down, right? If an engineer uh, goes out and says that it is not a covered loss for whatever reason, right? They say, well, it's not functional damage or it's cosmetic damage. Um, then that gives the adjuster cover to be able to say, not only, you know, it's not that I don't want to pay you, but I literally cannot pay you because the policy says that I can't pay you unless there's a covered loss, right? And so, right, so it gives them like a, so it's like they're not qualified to say that they can't pay you on their own without sending out the engineer who's supposedly qualified enough at that level as like a, I mean, if you think about like expert witnesses, right? right? So like they're at that level. Yeah, so I think that's part of the you know reason why they do it. So now I have had a lot of cases where you can get the adjuster themselves, the desk adjuster, to look at the engineer's report, which is usually very, very simple, not a lot of photos, not a lot of documentation to rely on and sometimes there is a lot of documentation but usually you know it's it's documentation of things that aren't even relevant so in other words like if there's hail all over a, you know modified bitumen roof they're over here taking photos of like you know uh, scratch marks and uh, you know other damage like that happened as a result of like an AC guy up on the roof, you know, they're looking at all these things that would not be something to be a covered loss and they're trying, you know, negligence or something like that. And they're taking photos of all of those things, right? 
but usually these engineer reports are very cut and paste. You know, they copy and paste these things and they're simple and they're usually full of holes. Another reason why they use engineers is they send them out to investigate very simple stuff like the date of loss or the, the client when they filed the claim or the roofing contractor helped them file the claim. When the adjuster, when I meet the adjuster up there, I have a hell report coordinate and I have a hell report on it and which direction that's where it came in from. And I everything, the size, what date, until the last 13 years, you need a report? Yeah. That's great. That's that's great. But here's here's where you, like a couple pitfalls you want to stay away from when you're doing that. Ne never ever 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 give them the date of loss, right? Like they want they want to know the date of loss from the client when they file the claim. But the the client does right. not actually have to give them a date of loss. All they have to give them is a date of discovery. And I I try to you know me man. I think, you know, I try to stay away from policy and coverage issues, right? And so, yeah. you know, I, I, you just, yeah. maybe I don't have you any business, you know, maybe I don't you have any business, <laughs> good, maybe, maybe I don't have any business talking about this stuff, but like if you, if you give them the date of loss, in my mind, you're kind of jumping into policy and coverage, right? And so like, just stay out of it and say, look, I don't know when it happened, but I can tell you when I noticed it or when I was aware of it. And usually that's when a roofing... Sorry, lost you somehow. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so date of discovery, right? A lot, a lot of times uh, people, um, you know, this is a policy coverage issue and it's not something that I'm really supposed to talk about, but I talk about it because it's, it's it's kind of policy coverage if you're jumping into it and giving them a date of loss, right? Like I don't know when it happened, but I know when I became aware of it, right? Or not even discuss whether you know when it happened or or don't know when it happened. Don't even bring that up, because also if you if you know me by now, never lie to an insurance company about anything, and that includes the client. So it is up to the insurance company to the adjuster to complete a thorough and, and detailed investigation. Like, that's required under their licensing, under their regulations, right? Like, they have to complete a detailed investigation. And so, right. it's up to them to determine what the date of loss is. That's one thing. So, you give them the date of discovery. So, like, a, an engineer will come out, and maybe you know when it happened, but maybe the hail report that they're using, not the hail report that you gave them, and maybe you give it to them. Maybe you give that to the adjuster, you give it to the engineer, but the engineer uses another weather report and doesn't rely on yours. <laughs> Therefore, yours doesn't even come into their decision-making process, even if you handed it to them, right? So as far as their conclusion, there's no documentation of your hail report. So like, if, if you give them the date, they, they hold that back. I would hold that back for, for now. Yes. Until yes, brother. Yes. Wow. Yes, yes, wow. yes, yes, wow. yes. So I love I love that you are giving them the details, right? And helping them to do their right. job. Because that I mean, it's, usually that's the way you get it done. But when it comes to these things, you're wading into tricky, tricky stuff, okay? So if they have an easy way of shutting you down, they're gonna go out. They're gonna inspect that they see obvious hail damage. They're not disputing that there's hail, but they look at their weather reports and according to the weather reports that they're pulling, it doesn't even show a hail date. And so they're saying, okay, yes, we see hail, but there was no hail dates during the time that they were covered with your insurance company that we can see, or no or no hail on the date of the, the date that they reported rather, right? And so that that is like, boom, automatic denial. No money at all, right? No money. So look, that's number one, date of discovery. Number two is, and equally as important, dude, you did, or can you hear me okay? Uh, yeah. All right. You cannot give them the cause of loss. All right? So like, 
Well, if, if you know that it's hail damage, that's great, okay? But don't, but it, could be wind, right? it could be wind and vice versa, so okay? So, yeah, I recently saw one of these where it was a, now but I'm gonna give you a, a trick though on how to very simply overcome some of these things. I, I just dealt with one recently, you might've seen this video where it was a, it was a wind damage deal and you know, it was, it was a tornado and the tornado came and it knocked uh, some condensers off of the, or some, some, a bunch of different equipment actually, off of the roof and they kind of somersaulted across the roof and punctured holes in the membrane. And so, but see, you gotta understand though, this tornado also, it produced a lot of high winds, but it also produced hail. So there was, there was evidence of hail damage all over the place. So, but they have it as a wind damage claim. They, they say basically, okay, well you can repair the membrane, even though there was water soaked oh. underlayment, water soaked decking, but they were denying that it was wet. They were saying that it was dry. Okay, so there was they were saying that they were going to pay money for repair, but they weren't going to replace this monster of a roof that had hail damage all over it because it was classified as a wind damage claim. So now look, if they do that to themselves, if the adjuster paints themselves into a corner by categorizing it as a wind only claim. Okay, so like we know, yeah. I think you know, one of the ways to combat an engineer report is to use your own engineer. Okay, and I'm going to get into that in a second, but I want you to bend, I want you to bookmark that for a second. So, sure. if but if I was going to use my own engineer, that's going to be that's going to come with a considerable cost and delay right. and time. While the while you got to get the engineer an open appointment for him to come out get it done, wait for him to compile all his documentation, send it back to you, you send it over to the desk adjuster, and then you have two engineer reports side by side. Now he has two yep. expert witnesses, and he can choose if he wants. He does have that discretion. So, but look, the considerable cost to do that, and time. Time is money, right? And so if I can avoid that at all costs, I would love to do that. So if I'm stuck in a position where they've already sent the engineer out and they've shut it down based on a stupid reason like that, on, on wrong date of loss, or uh, it was supposed to be hail and they have it as wind, well, I could go back to the adjuster and get them to try to overturn that decision. But you know what I'd rather do, brother? You know what I'd rather do? I would rather the client file a brand new claim correctly as a hail damage yep. claim and what yeah, happens what, what happens when someone files a brand new claim it, 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 the old claim just gets raised right i mean you know they just start all over that's right what happens on a brand new claim what, what do they do who do they send out to the property they send out the what when you first file a brand new claim what happens first who do they send to the property Another adjuster, another that, adjuster. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So you work that guy the right way, huh? That's right. I mean, so, so if they if they send that. out the same adjuster and try to continue the the, the previous claim, man, isn't that bad well, faith? You already have an engineer for you, go, Mr. Justin. Yeah. Well, well, that that's possible, right? So, but if you know anything yeah. about me, my thing is I really like to to see where they're gonna go first. Let them make their move, okay? And don't show them any of my cards at all. Let them make their move and then be a counter puncher and come back to them with my move after they've already made theirs. See, if I predetermine all my moves without seeing what their moves are, then I already play my hand without seeing what my options are. Does that make sense? Well, I, I like I like to see the landscape. Like got on a vehicle, the guy was willing to give you twenty thousand, and he said, "Here, man, I'll give you fifteen. Pay that." Yes. So, like, I I, I like I like to wait for them to. Yeah, a, lot, a lot a lot of guys say, "Look, it's better to go out and meet the adjuster 
and hand them a copy of your Xactimate report if you already have it, right? And have, have right. it already made, do their job for them. Look, I actually don't think that's a good idea. I think it's a better idea to go out, do the inspection with the adjuster, maybe have have my estimate ready, right? But not, yeah, let them open the coverage. Like if I do get an independent and he knows I use Xactimate and we have agreement on a lot of these things, maybe he wants to rely on my ESX file. You know, yeah. maybe he I wants to take my ESX after, file. After, after That'd be great. You on one of your videos? After listening to me on, on one of your videos, I got up to uh, six hundred, like six hundred and fifty per square, and I got them to to cover the decking before even removing the removing it from due to stress <laughs> and the nails and the like, oh, my man. work. Yeah. I love it. Um, I love hearing stories yeah, yeah, like we, that. We, I mean, I, re I really do because I, I don't know. When I, when I make the videos, you know, I, I don't know. What, yeah, I don't know what guy. That's they run to, they run to it right away. No, that's not warrant. I can't give you overhead profit on the roof because it's not warrant. Mm -hmm. But what the hell, what the hell does that mean? Well, look. No, yeah. those are my limits. Look, let me. Yeah, let, I let, tell let, them to do my contractor. I, I, um. I do uh, the fencing, the hell, the, the hell hit by the windows, screens. Uh, we're doing fencing gutters, uh, some fascia, and then non. What? What? Are we in a match state? A non-match state? Does that matter, or does it? Is there? Uh, well, if listen, they don't have. Uh, if your if your problem is you're asking about overhead and profit, if that's the struggle, okay, and you're and you're doing a job with multiple trades like you're saying. The first thing I want to ask is, are you doing interior work? Yeah, I'm doing interior work. So okay. I'm up to the time. Okay. The guy inside in. Okay. So if you're doing interior work, that's good news because interior almost always will trigger that overhead and profit. It, it might, and I don't mean that they're going to give it to you automatically on that first estimate. And and I don't mean, you know, like on a, for a little bit of interior damage. I'm talking about. One, you know, one, two rooms, you're into painting, drywall, insulation, you know, multiple trades, yeah, you gotta go yeah. in and out, work around the, but, but let me, let me ask you this. Are you inspecting every room, closet, and hallway? Yeah, for sure. I think, okay. I, 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 I listen to what you said. hundred percent. I Good. have hundred pictures. I put a whole, I crime scene together. I, I, Good. I got my laser. Good. I, I, I run my... <laughs> I have everything, dude. <laughs> That's good news. Now, are, 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 hey, I, I, I'm telling you, Chad, I, I like, there's only a few guys that I know that get high off of this, and you're one of them. You know? <laughs> I mean, let, me, let me ask you this, too. So, are you going into the attic whenever possible? Yeah, I do. Not all the time, but I, I do when I when I see what, when I want to see what kind of installations up there to, to replace the you know, or I want to check out the decking, mm -hmm. if it's double A, you know, whatever. Here's the, here's the key to that, man. You're looking for, um, you're looking for water spots on the deck. That's what you're looking for. I am, you're looking for leaks and stuff, obviously. And, and if you're, if you see water spots on ceilings, you're looking to see the other side of that to see how bad it really is, right? Because there's probably blown insulation above it and things. Sometimes not, but you want to look at the deck and inspect it and try to see if you can find any water spots because if you can then those water spots have to be cut out of that deck if you expose the deck then if the first of all if the deck's not up to code is it half inch in an area where it's supposed to be three quarters five eighths right i mean if it is then the whole deck's got to be brought up to code I mean that's a big well, deal. Thing is that I, I tried that and I got I screwed myself because of a uh, well what okay I redecked one in Sweeney and that that's uh, a wing code and everything so come to the decking it did call for five minutes so they said they, they don't have ICC coverage you know code <laughs> you know for coverage for it and so I oh wait I wait wait they, hold on so they didn't have the OL. <laughs> Uh, coverage, the ordinance and law coverage on their insurance policy? Oh, what do you say? 
What are you saying? They didn't have the coverage in their policy? The insurance company said that? I, I, they called it, it was ICC. Uh, the wait. natural code, it, yeah. code coverage or something like that. Wait, wait, who said this, though? It's the adjuster. The adjuster saying that uh, that they don't have the upgrade code. You know, like, uh, if you're out of code, we're not paying to upgrade you into code. Okay, so that means they didn't have ordinance and law coverage in the policy. That's called uh -huh. that's called OL coverage, ordinance and law policy, uh, ordinance and law coverage. Um, it's, it's, it's a part of the policy that it means exactly what you just said. You know, if, if something is not up yeah. to code, they bring it up to code, right? Another thing to think about yeah. is that the, that's usually included in the policy if they have a mortgage. The mortgage company is going to require that, right? Just like they're going to require that they have an RCV policy versus an ACV. Sometimes they have only a little bit of money on the mortgage so that it's you know it's kind of different or it might be a home equity loan. It might be a little different on that. So um, I go check with the mortgage company if they require that? Oh, here's what I would do, brother. As soon as you sign somebody up, try to educate them on as much as you know about these things without getting into policy and coverage and tell them that, you know, as part of the welcome, like, startup uh the action steps that you really do when you sign up a client, like you have them sign this form, you have them sign the contract, right? You have them give you a check or whatever it is. Um, part of the, pro you know, in some states like uh, Florida, they have to have the client yeah, sign yeah, like uh, permit yeah, applications. But what I would do is uh, ahead, I would have, <clears throat> I would have the client draft an email to the insurance agent, okay? To the agent not the adjuster, but to the agent. And they wanna notify the agent that they have a claim going or that they're getting ready to start for hail damage or whatever, right? And that they've selected a general contractor, his name is such and such, his company is such and such, and I've copied him to the email so that you have his contact info, right? And there are some questions that I need to have, that I need you to answer for us to make this process go smoothly, and so that we don't run into, into any uh, complications. Um, number one, I'm assuming that I have replacement cost value coverage. Okay, that's RCV right. coverage, right? Um, if I don't, please explain. Um, and assuming that I do have replacement cost value coverage, are there any items within my policy that are not RCV, right? For instance, and you don't you don't have to say this in the email, but between me and you, right? We already know we run into like fences and other uh, unattached structures and other things like uh, patio covers and carports. Sometimes we've seen where those things are not full RCV; they're ACV only, meaning the depreciation that they're withholding. That's what you talked about in your video. Right, right. Meaning the depreciation that they're withholding is not. Uh, re released at all like you know usually it's released at the end after you do the work right but it's not released at all and so you have to watch out for that so like if you ask that question i'm assuming that i have full rcv coverage and assuming that i do are there any items in my policy that are not full replacement cost value um then then the agent should write back yeah the fence right they should tell you that um and then the other part is i'm assuming well, that i have right right Pardon? By, by then, they know they know not to mess around, pull, pull around with you. Well, I don't, I, don't, they know you're... I don't know because this is the agent, remember. This is not the adjuster. It's two different worlds. Yeah, right. So the agent's the one that sold in the policy. The adjuster is going to be two. And these people are not going to, in, in most cases, they're not going to hang out together, right? They're not even going to know about each yeah. other. So, But the, this is what's important. The other question that you need to ask the agent as a part of that welcoming um, email is, um, I'm assuming that I have ordinance and law, in quotes, OL, coverage, okay, uh, in my policy, code upgrade coverage, ordinance and law coverage. Um, and if I don't, you know, please let me know. And if I do, assuming that I do have it, what are there any caps, limitations, or exclusions? Because sometimes they'll have the code upgrade coverage, but only up to like a 10% maximum. I've seen on right, right. Uh, commercial claims like a five thousand dollar flat fee maximum, you know. So you got to really yeah, be yeah, careful yeah. of that. Yeah, I get the deck page. I'll get the deck page sometimes, mm -hmm. 
and I'll, I'll go off the decade sometimes, but then, yeah, you're, you're, you're opening statement, your email. Yeah, I, yeah I, you're right. And listen, I like it this way because a couple different reasons. So you close it out with, when you when you respond, Mr. Agent, please copy my contractor who's attached, right? And here's all his contact info um, so that we can have this info. Now you've opened up a line of communication with the agent, which can get you in the door if you can strike up a relationship to start talking with that agent about what you're doing for their client and how you're taking care of them and how the adjuster wanted to manhandle them, but you held them to account and you had them pay everything. The agent actually likes to hear that stuff. They like, well, they, yeah. they know that the adjusters hose their client and they're afraid that if their client gets a claim that they're not gonna renew their policy well, the, the next time that it lapses, right? The next time it comes up for renewal. Um, they're thinking, oh, great, man. I hope they don't get hosed real bad. You know what I mean? Like, so if they find somebody like you who goes above and beyond and knows their stuff without getting into policy coverage, right? And knows how to navigate those very tricky waters, especially these commercial agents. But that, that's what I would do on that to make sure in the beginning, okay? So you don't have to go check their mortgage and stuff. Go to the source because the mortgage may not be all that there is. You know what I mean? Especially on these commercial deals where there's commercial financing in play, definitely don't rely on mortgages. Um, you know, go to the source, yeah. go to the insurance agent to find it out. If you can't figure that out, you could also get this information usually from the adjuster once they're assigned to it, right? But without tipping them off, you can go to the agent. It, it accomplishes a lot in the beginning. It, it, make, it establishes yourself as the professional who knows what they're doing with your client, right? right. Makes you look good for your client. And, and you know what you, you know what you, I, I get what you're saying. Uh, hey, you know what your video, your video put on me? Like, uh, I'm telling you, like, I came off as a, I like, I'm not a licensed adjuster. Now, I'm not. Me, me, neither. me neither. Me like, neither. Oh, yeah, you know what? I was like, man, I'm talking to a licensed adjuster right now. Nah. But, I mean, I'm, 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 no I'm interest in being a licensed adjuster. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he said, he said, uh, I have a, uh, a, 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 a condition form that I give to my clients, right? They sign this decision form and it's like 15% if they go to with another entity or whatever. And, but the thing is that we're, we're there allowing us to represent them and that. And then the judge said, Hey, I need to see your license. <laughs> I said, um, I said, I'm not, are you going to go, are you, are you a PA? Yeah. I said, I, I said, I sure am. He goes, I told him I was a private adjuster uh, instead of a public adjuster, you know what I'm saying? He was like, I thought, he said, what do you mean private? I said, they hired me directly so they have a private adjuster. So I don't need to, I don't need to show you any licensing or anything like that. And uh, he was like, you know, he backed off a little bit, you know? But I got a little nervous because, you know, I mean, by the way we're operating, the way you're operating, it, you know, what, the, what I'm learning off you, I mean, we're coming in and just the floating and doing all this advocates and all that stuff i mean it's just it's intimidating to them to where they'd want to they want to you know investigate on us or try to get our licensing or something like that okay. Okay, that's what i got off the guy Okay, well, check this out. Let me stop you right there, okay? This is very important, man. This is crucial. I'm glad you called me because you got to straighten this out. And you're in Texas, too. So when you got nervous like that, you had big reason to be nervous, all right? Because it's the, uh, the Texas Department of Insurance in Texas, right? So it, it's especially in Texas, you gotta be very, 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 every, I mean, every state's got a department of insurance, but so first off, look, yes, if you're working with the policy holder, okay, and you're, and you're working off of some type of agreement directly with the policy holder for you to earn a fee, you know, off of the amount of their claim as it goes up, then that's not legal in Texas unless you have a public adjuster license. Even if you're their private adjuster, because that's what a public adjuster is. They're a private adjuster yeah. for the client. And so yeah. uh, if you don't have that, then you just want to hope and pray that he didn't file a complaint with the Texas Department of Insurance because they could put you in jail for that, dude. Now, look. They could put me in jail for doing what we're doing? Well, if you, if you were just working to help the client up their claim, right? Uh, like and you, oh, oh, no, just and stuff like that. No, I'm general contracting all the way. Okay, yeah, then you're fine. That you're fine there, right? But you don't, you don't, 
listen, you like you don't want to work, uh, you don't want to have any agreement built into your general contracting that says that you get a certain amount of money, like a percentage of what they get, you know, based on how much the approval amount was. The the what you're getting is you're getting if like if the adjuster says um, if the insurance uh, claim says that the roof costs twenty thousand dollars to build you're getting that twenty thousand dollars you know what I mean you're not getting like like so you're not doing the roof for ten but you're billing for twenty and getting a percentage like I'm not saying you're doing that but I'm just saying that's the you don't. In my mind, here's the beauty. Well, like I'm, I'm a consultant, right? Like I go in and I work on these claims, and I, I do get uh, a lot of my money paid sometimes based on the results. But I'm working for the contractor. You know what I mean? Like I'm working directly for the contractor, and I'm working like whenever I'm talking to the adjuster. If I'm working for ABC Construction. I'm talking to them as Chad from ABC Construction. You know what I mean? Like I'm not like a third party of any kind. Yeah, it's I'm working directly as a consultant for the contractor. But then if I'm ever doing any work for a homeowner that's that I'm not doing any of the repairs for them, then I'm then I can then I can work as an estimator, but I don't have any of my uh, fees based on the results of their claim and that kind of thing. I just feel like I got to clear, you know, just throw that up. Maybe I I um, Ooh, yeah, sure. Okay. Misunderstood that, but that like that could be what the adjuster's thinking on that. But here's why. Here's well, why I like working you know for the. What? I want to say you this know, though. This is this. This is why I like working. Say they, say they were to get CDI. Say they were to get CDI. Right. I would, okay. You made a big point. You know, uh, you know, like you said, I, I had a, you know, I felt nervous for a reason. You know, it's good. But thing is, if they were, were to get to that point, you know, I'll hire an adjuster. Like maybe it'll be too late for that. I mean, just trying to get out of that, I'd probably loophole. I'd, I'd, you know, try to hire an adjuster and tell them, hey, look, you work for, not even, and just get an adjuster's report. I need an estimate, get his name. Oh, I don't know what I'll do, but I mean, no, no, this, I never this, run this is what you do, man. You're, you, and then put it in writing with them as soon as possible. I have been hired as the general contractor to perform all the repairs that are prescribed by this claim. <laughs> that's what I would say. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah, you don't, you don't, right. you don't have to say, and here's the thing. You never want to talk to them about policy and coverage. You never want to talk to the, you know, to the insurance company about, about that stuff. You never want to say, Hey, the policy says that you have to pay this or this and that, or you, you know, you can say that they did not pay enough money. You can say that they've underpaid. You can say that they haven't paid for enough items. You can say a lot of different things. You can say this is, you know, you haven't identified this damage and I have identified the damage. You can say a lot of things. See, in my mind, when you are the general contractor, you have more power than anybody. And see, people don't understand that. I think a lot of people think, oh no, the public, and I hear people say this a lot, a public adjuster has a lot more power because they can hold them to, the, to account on policy issues. Yeah. Yes, sure they can, but the, why does a public adjuster keep calling me then to get the documentation for them? You see what I mean? To go out and do the yeah. inspection and get the estimate written correctly? Because all of sure. that stuff, like you can't hold them to account on the policy without relying on solid documentation, evidence, the case, a solid case, right? And so like public right. adjusters love me after I've already done all that stuff for them because I hand them and make their job a lot easier. But without all of those other things, they can't do it. And they have to rely on what the contractor says, the public adjuster does. They can't say, hey, I'm the contractor and I'm telling you, I can't do this job the way you're, you're saying. They have to rely on uh, what other contractor. Oh, I talked to this many, talked to three different con. So when you're the contractor, you've been hired, if you have been hired and there's a contract, they can't go get opinions of everybody. They can if they want, but it doesn't matter. There's nobody else that's going to get the job, only you. So it only matters whether or not you can perform the repairs for the for the amount and doing it the way that they say. It doesn't matter what everybody else thinks about how the, rep the repairs can be performed. So if I'm the contractor, I just simply say, okay, I see that your, your prescription is X. I'm going to go attempt to do your prescription. But if I can't, I'm going to show you how I can't with documentation and give you a price for what it's going to take to do it right. You see, and there's nothing that they could do to get out of that. So when it comes to overhead and profit, okay, if they don't want to give it to you, 
and you get into the deck and you find that there's water spots and now all of a sudden you're into a deck and even if they don't give you the full replacement which they should there should be no reason why they don't if it's required by code and they have the coverage like except for that example where your client didn't have the coverage right that doesn't count um yeah. Right. But if, if they're supposed to give you a full play, now you're into all kind. You're into framing. It's a much bigger mess. Yeah. You got to take precautions for the yeah, attic. What about, what about the hurricane clips? Hurricane clip. Yes, definitely. If that's required by code, that's got to be done. But here's my point is, is you're looking for like maybe when you start out on a job, there's five, six, seven trades. Right. But then maybe uh -huh. maybe you can maybe you continue on with that job and find that it's much more complicated than you thought right and there's more trades that come that that come about as you get into it like you open up the floor find wet spots open up the open up the drywall and interior and you find framing that was wet find insulation that was wet or it wasn't up to code right um you had to do something around a window they have window beating you tried to get the window company to come out and do the repair Repair is not possible. You could document all that. Now the window's got to be replaced, oh, right? Back and forward. Yes. Running so, back and forward. so I yeah. think whenever they don't want to give you overhead and profit in the beginning, my thing is okay. I think what I'm hearing you say, Mr. Adjuster, is that if you were to try to give me overhead and profit, it wouldn't be approved. And the reason why it wouldn't be approved is because it's not complex enough and it doesn't require en enough coordination as a general contractor. And so I think even if you wanted to give it to me, right, maybe you do, you know it would be kicked back down if you try to do it, right? So you try to find some common ground there and make it, it's not a battle, it's a friendship, it's not a friendship, but it's a working relationship. Yeah, yeah. And it's like you're giving it's them a way friend. out, you're giving them the excuse that they need. But the caveat to that, the catch is, okay, I understand, you can't put it on there, because if you did, it would be kicked back out, okay? So my thing right. is, I'm gonna go try to do it without a lot of coordination, without a lot of complexity, and I'm gonna try to do it your way, um, but I'm gonna ask you if I, so, so go ahead and let's, I'm willing to remove that from the estimate at this time, as long as you're willing to revisit this, if that's not possible. And I understand that if it isn't possible, I'm gonna have to bring you solid documentation to prove why that is at that time so you're, oh, yeah. you're you're kicking it down the road you're choosing to have the fight at another day right so you're kicking the can yeah, down right, the road right. you're letting the adjuster off the hook chances are later on yeah, when you come about the same time. yeah later on when you come back with that documentation and you ask for it later hey we try to do it your way and guess what it's not possible more right than it's be <laughs> more, more than likely it is but more than likely it's going to be because it's not even the same adjuster to begin with. <laughs> it's some other adjuster yeah, that's got to make that determination. You see what I mean? So a yeah, lot of these things, man, yeah. it's, it's, you just got to play it out, go through their process, right? But I do want to be, they'll give me, they'll give me an overhead, on, overhead and profit on fans, on the windows and everything like that. Mm -hmm. But then they say, they'll say, but roofing, roofing is going to be like that. And I'm like, if that's the main, you are a roofing contractor. You should be able to have, like, if that's what they're saying. Well, let me ask you, know? you: isn't that just, isn't that really just Safeco and Liberty Mutual? Maybe Allstate. Uh, Liberty Mutual, yeah. Uh, Safeco, yeah. Safeco, for sure. I'm dealing with like three, three but, Safeco's but, but, right but now. But let me ask you: is there any other insurance company that's doing that to you? Yeah, I've heard it from. Uh, well, State Farm is pretty good about it. I yeah. mean, I've heard it. All State, all State's another one right now. You know. But I just want to, I just want to give you some positive encouragement and reassurance in the sense that, yes, I'm aware that it's way. happening. It's been happening for a couple years, but as far as I know, it's usually only handled by those uh, usual suspects. Maybe a couple other ones, right? It might be a little insurance company that'll try it. You try to stand firm as much as possible, but but if you know that it's Liberty Mutual and Safeco, you might take that into account when you take on the job in the first place. You know what I mean? And I've, I've gotten criticism for that because one time I said, I'm not handling another Liberty Mutual or Safeco claim. And a lot of people are like, no, dude, we need you to keep them honest. You know what I mean? So um, I, I just don't like doing, you know, 
one job the same way but get paid much less for it just because of who their insurance company is, you know. But I've been around a long time and I've seen that Allstate at one time was that kind of insurance company and then all of a sudden they got great compared to the way that they were. State yeah, Farm yeah. State Farm was like the Cadillac and I've seen them go down. USAA became, you know, the good one and I've seen them kind of go down. So, you know, I think that these Maybe things like change. Changes, yeah, these things change over time. And so I, I wouldn't like the complexity, the complex when you're at or uh, it's not complex enough, or it's not, you need to be three or more trades. Right, and they, they change over time. They like it, it, it used to be the three trades or more, right? And then all of a sudden they moved yeah. that, they moved that unwritten rule. <laughs> it was never a written rule. It was an unwritten rule, right? And they moved that um, to something that was so objective and something, something that's such a, a line that can be interpreted different ways, right? But I just like to prove the complexity, prove the coordination. Also, give them um, redacted uh, subcontractor invoices with not the prices on there, but this just to show all the people that you hire. Get a camera out on the job site. Get a camera out there to show. Huh? You said no prices on there? Yeah, dude, that's none of their business about the prices. Read black it right out. And when they say, oh, we need you to unredact that, I'm going to say, how long you been adjuster? Are you serious? <laughs> like I'm not. That's none of your business. I'm not. I'm. I'm giving good faith by even giving you the opportunity. Yeah, you know to share. That. Yeah, but I'm not going to share my inside secrets with you. <laughs> that's proprietary I information. That's none of your business. <laughs> I did that one time on one, and then uh, they see my profit, and then they say, "Well, we don't need to pay you all this money." That's so stupid, that's man. Stupid. I, I, yeah, I, it's so I, stupid I because they don't do the accounting at the end of the year to show everything that, that it takes to run this business. You know what I mean? So uh, that just is, is so, um, to me, the, tr the real tragedy is not the people making too much money. It's all of the people who do this work and are so underpaid for it. That's the real tragedy to me. So I have no sympathy for that. Let me ask you something, Chad. Yeah. How busy are you? I'm pretty, I'm pretty I'm I'm as busy as I can be, man, at all times. Yeah, yeah, I What's got up? you. Uh, Before you get there, I, I want to say it. something about the engineer because um, I don't want to leave that part of it hanging without giving you full advice. I actually think, right. and this is why I asked you early on, how many of these you're handling. I think it's a good That's idea good. if you're if you're going through a lot of them, you need to have a solid, very 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 good and skilled engineer who's on your team these are very hard to get they're not a dime a dozen most of them if they if they do this type of work which is like causation really is it well i do but they're they're not, none of them that are available so ca causation is what you need them specializing in and you're so not just any old structural engineer right but you need somebody who specializes in causation and the thing, and like forensic causation, and there's other things too. It doesn't have to say just that, but that's got to be one of their primary focuses. When you, when you, any of them that are available to keep themselves working for the carriers, which is the bread and butter work, they don't want to do these things for the contractor. They don't want to do it. You see, they don't want to yeah. be, they don't want to get themselves working for the enemy and get themselves on the record and cut themselves out of it's easy bread and butter work later. So what I recommend you doing is actually place, and I, and I don't recommend this for everybody, but somebody that's doing the volume that you are, I recommend that you put an ad in indeed.com for qualify. You might even try Facebook too. I haven't done that yet, but you might, they're coming along. Um, you want to put an, an ad out for, for an engineer to come and work for you full time. <laughs> At least part time, dude. I mean, like, so where they're not taking on it, you're giving them a full time job, right? And so, because the reason why I say this, dude, if you went, if you had to go hire an independent engineer, you know, three times a month, you're gonna pay a lot more money than you would if you just hired one. Does that make yeah. sense? I mean, you might share, you might pull it off with a couple other contractors in your area, but you gotta hire one. Have them come to work for you exclusively, okay? And and, and I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not I'm not at that level, Chad. I'm, I'm I'm a small I'm a small small contract. Sure. I only, I uh, yeah. I only do, and and the 
but like I made a program together. No, like that's I okay. So, so if you if you're small, then you still need the engineer reports because you're dealing with these things. So, we'll so it'll, it'll balance out. It'll so you're gonna out. you're gonna have to find an engineer that you can hire independently on these jobs on a per right. job basis. But you've got to have that because right. I almost think that. See, if you think forward, think in advance when you when you are getting the volume, and for guys that already are at that level, right? You know, it, it, when you when you if you had one that worked for you exclusively, the advantage is you can start the process by sending the engineer. You see, and getting the and get the engineer report, a good one from an engineer with a state certified stamp on it. You see what I mean? Or you could take that sucker and close the door shut before they ever even get a chance to open. You could open it up with an engineer report or, again, keep it in your back pocket until you see what they do. But have it ready to go and where it's not like another month delay process. And that could be a selling point for your clients, the property owners, when you're telling them, look, we have engineers on staff. You know what I mean? This is, how, well, this is, what, they, this is what the insurance companies do. This is what we do to combat it. But I wanted to I wanted to throw that out there. Now back to your question, you were asking me about how busy I am. <laughs> yeah. I sit would around and eat ice cream. cream one one about, would you be interested in handling one uh, in Magnolia thick? What's it? What kind of job is it? It's a uh, it's an art portal. It's a commercial building. It's a shopping strip, and it has I think a twenty two package unit on top. And uh, they got stucco. There's chips on the stucco. There's gonna be paint. It gives it a lot. They paid out fifteen thousand, so they open up coverage to the roof portion of it. So we can we can do something like manipulation, you know, where how are we gonna take off the flashing without manipulating this roof system? The underlayment goes here, or I don't know what you would see, mm -hmm. but you know. Uh, it, 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 it's, a, it's a can of worm for them, you know. I mean, what, what, kind of, uh, what kind of roof is it? It's an R panel. R panel, okay. It's on the, okay, I got it. So, the um, what type of loss? Wind? No, no, it's hell. And there's, there's nicks and beans all over the stucco. Got I it. I mean, you could find them. Yeah. I, I, like your, your thermal section, like my thermal section, we'll find them. There's gutters. They're yeah. flashing, they're standing. So are you um yeah, are, are you using the Xactimate yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I got, I so, got my wife. And part of the I, I didn't get to finish telling you earlier too, the forms and documents on my course. Um there's like I don't know, there's a whole bunch of twenty something different templates of uh you know, specific estimates that I've written, interior, exterior, you know, lots Ooh. of different things. But the forms, documents, all the building codes are there. I did want to tell you that, but so on a job like that, what I, what I typically will do is I'll, you hire me as a consultant and I'll come and help you do a detailed, you know, in-person inspection on the property. Um, and then I, I, I typically, because of my schedule the way it is, I like to handle these things now where it's more so because of the course and everything. There's the people that I'm working with already usually know how to use the exact domain so sometimes i'm not doing that yeah I can, um what i can do is so i can I, lighten it up and if you, you, you lighten up the load for you i can go do the inspection i can tackle this one and if there's anything you ask for well the, va give it the, the big value where i come in is the inspection honestly that's the that's the big value right and so usually well, like, for one thing is i never write an estimate anymore i haven't have it in years for anything that i haven't seen in person right but what I'm what I'm saying is the, the what what I would think would be best for you and what I would prefer is a consultant relationship where it's more like um, I go I look at it so I know everything that's involved with it I review everything all the documentation all the paperwork but I work with you as your coach like I tell you you know look here's what sure. I think yeah, you know we go and, and then you write the estimate and I help you with it so you show me what you got yeah. and I go here how about the you know we add these items. Um, a lot of times, just in a few minutes, I can come up with a couple hundred thousand dollars in items for people sometimes. Like, we have this relationship on this one deal, and these guys did a, a $900,000 estimate on, a, on an apartment complex. And in 10 minutes, just with a handful of items that I saw, added $99,000 that were approved. You know what I mean? Like, so, so it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's more than worth any value to it. You know what I mean? But I... 
you're that that weapon. You know what I mean? That I can, uh, we can, you know, we get together. We can do something like that. You yeah, know I, I, mean? I think uh, I think I could be we'll more effective. Back, I can be more a more effective weapon for you in that way. You can cover a lot more ground, so you're not waiting around on me. And you know, adjusters come back with their responses. You show me what they, you know, what did they send you? Forward it over to me, and then we sit and strategize and together come up with the best plan for their every move. Um, that's that's the stuff that I do more than anything these days. Well, look, man, I got I got your number. Um, can you can you text me your email and uh, your for email sure. information? And I'm gonna I'm gonna send, I'm gonna send you over that stuff of work. So that's that's what I was gonna. Invitation. That's what I was gonna ask you for, man. Then we can we can craft something together, and I can send you a proposal. We can lock it down. The only other caveat I have for you, brother, would you mind at all terribly if you saw this entire conversation pop up on a YouTube video? Your name never came up in the video. What's that? Would you mind terribly if you saw this entire conversation pop up on a YouTube video? On my channel. Man, I wouldn't care. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, good. I, I was I don't always do this man but I was I'm on I'm on the road and I wanted to get back to you and I'm like thinking you know what this is a good time um let me put this on film because I need to get a video up anyway and I thought you never know what's going to happen and I look at all the stuff we just talked about don't you think if you watch this on YouTube we talk, we talk, we, yeah man put it on YouTube uh, we covered a whole lot I mean people can learn off of just our conversation you know? but this is all they give from our conversations, it's, it's, the rest. The levels out there. I mean, I've, I've learned off from what I learned from you. I mean, you know, I got people asking me <laughs> all kind of. Uh, Man, I feel like, you know, that is so. What are we talking about? You might well go go look at that video again, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, and much love, man. I, 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 no matter if we work together or not, I, I value the call I'm, I, I I wanted to give you the time just by how much time you've already spent on my channel you know what I mean and, and how much time you spent investing into yourself and you trusted me man. with that information you know what I mean so that's dude, that you know gives me uh, goosebumps yeah I, I, yeah dude you know what and I, I gotta get my hands on the program really I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm always willing to learn I'm advanced you know, knowledge and power you know so I mean I'm, I'm ready for it but uh, I'm doing it I'm a small company but yeah, man. Uh, going off your well, what you what you said. I mean, I've, I've made a lot of money from what you said. That's that's the key right there is the results. Who cares about anything I said unless it actually works, right? Who cares about it's it all? It is all entirely hot air. What anybody talks yeah. about on YouTube, including myself, unless it freaking works, right? Like I'm, if I I was trying to fix it, I was trying to fix a dishwasher and I looked on. Yeah, I was trying to fix a dishwasher recently and I looked on YouTube and like three of them were wrong and one of them was right and it was like 15 seconds long. You know what I mean? Like, forget all the other. So I, I, that that means a lot to me, man. And also, don't buy the course yet. Don't invest yet. Uh, let's see what we're gonna do with this first. I usually like my clients to have access to the course. So uh, so don't cool, do that cool. yet. Hey, right. that, that, hey, you know what? I'm even using your target game. We have those estimates already, man. But I mean, you know, they battle game. back and forth. It's a bit of an estimate. But I mean, you know, I mean, you can pay fairly, you know, just for going off of what, what you showed. I mean, by, by quality, by square foot, and all that. And then uh, I like when you corrected that adjuster in the room. Uh, what'd you tell him? Hey, look, Mr. Adjuster, what'd you, what'd you tell him? I forgot. You, you kind of snuffed that guy out pretty quick. And he kind of. You kind of crawfish to the back of the room. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there have been a couple of those through the years. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, sure, man. Uh, I got your number, Mr. Chad. Just call me anytime, and uh, I'll be I'll be sending you over the scope of work. I'll I'll just text you my email, and you can uh, you know I'll respond to you. I'll just you know I'll just email me, and then uh, I'll email you. I really want to do it. All right, sounds good, man. It's been awesome talking with you. I look forward to working with you, brother, sincerely. All right. All right. I appreciate that, Chad. All right. All right. I've been waiting for you for a while, dude. All right. But Sorry, it's been so long, man. Glad you got back. I know you're busy, man, but uh, I'm Same. glad you got back with me, man. Same as you, brother. Yeah. All right. We'll see All you. Right, Keep Thanks. grinding. Uh. Awesome, dude.